In Scripture, Isaiah and other prophets foretell of the rising of the isles of the east in the last days. Hmm. It is amazing that many scholars haven't bothered to conduct this kind of study we are about to take you through. Because no, they are wrong. The Bible is not vague at all on this. It gives exact directions even before looking at any extra biblical texts. Which, by the way, in Solomon's Gold series, we got all the way through part 12 before ever using any extra biblical text and had already proven the location of Ophir, Sheba, and Tarshish without them. We have a lot to cover in this video, but we are committed to keep this under 20 minutes, so we are going to move fast on this one. But see what you think. Verify. Test these things for yourself. Welcome to 100 Clues. The Philippines is the ancient land of gold, known as Ophir in the Bible and history. No, it's no fable. And this has already been proven in full in the God Culture Solomon's Gold series. At the request of many viewers, we have pulled out 100 compelling clues, really proofs or evidences, from this research in which we will highlight briefs of the most compelling points, and yes, there are over 100. These videos are for those who have not had time to watch Solomon's Gold series or for review and easy to share to friends and family, especially skeptics. This brief video cannot replace that 50 video series nor prove the way that it does, but this will be very effective nonetheless. So go there for full evidence, but now part 22 of our series, 100 Clues, The Philippines is Ophir, one clue at a time. Remember our passage in 2 Chronicles appears to set forth the journey for Solomon's navy was a three-year round-trip journey. Now in this video, you will find this proves out as an actual three-year journey round-trip. And when we get to the ships of that day, We'll nail that down firmly with zero room for debate. Don't worry. And Ophir is a real guy who migrated from Mashhad, Iran, to the east. We've already proven that in this series, and we certainly prove it in Solomon's Gold series. Of the land of the Garden of Eden, in fact. Yes. Now, we'll map all this at the end. But let's start in Isaiah. Again, we are going to pull the geographic markers out of these passages to test geography. We cover this in full context in Solomon's Gold series, but we don't have time to do that here to try to keep this video under 20 minutes. Here, Isaiah prophesies of the islands and isles in the east at the ends of the earth. This is a continual pattern, but take note of these markers. Isaiah 60, verse 9, Surely the isles shall wait for me. For who? For Yahuwah. For his law, in fact, it says in other passages. And the ships of Tarshish first, to bring thy sons from far. Now this, is a, this is a promise to the lost tribes of Israel, by the way. Their gold and silver with them. What are the isles of gold and silver? Who is he talking about? Where is Tarshish? It's in the Philippines, just south of Ophir, Christ, to the Greeks. See, the Greeks documented that. We already showed you a map. This confirms Tarshish is Isles as well in this passage as Ophir. And they are the lands of silver, Tarshish, and gold, Ophir, or Argyre and Christ in Greek. Those are the Isles he is looking to rise in the last Days. Let's see this through. Does it prove out? You'll see. These isles continually are said to judge, and they await the restoration of Yahuwah's law, his ways. They will sing a new song. That's right, Filipinos, no more karaoke. A new song from Yahuwah. Yes. Here, though, he defines them as going south, 
to the ends of the earth. What's that? That's Solomon's route. It was to the south and then the east, the isles. David writes about a multitude of isles that will worship Yahuwah. Some might say, oh, well, it says south. Therefore, there must be isles south of Israel. Yeah, where are they? Yeah, uh, come on. Where are they? They don't exist. It is south and east by all of these passages. You put them all together. Now, David writes about a multitude of isles that will worship Yahuwah. He's not talking about Greece, the most pagan isles of all time, nor Britain, which pretty much same history, if you look at it, very full of Nephilim lore in those areas. Ezekiel mentions Tyrus, Tyre. You know Hiram was king of Tyre. He ran Solomon's navy, his admiral. His route was to many isles, indeed. Isaiah 24 speaks of the islands of the sea in the east as well. Isaiah 46 speaks of a ravenous bird or bird of prey from the east, righteous men from a far country. The greatest bird of prey is the eagle, and the largest and strongest eagle on the earth, it's not America, nor is it in Rome. It is the Philippine eagle, the largest and strongest on earth. Isaiah talks about the islands of righteous men from the east who judge yet again. Isaiah 41, the isle saw it and feared the ends of the earth, were afraid, drew near and came. Exactly what these isles do over and over in Isaiah. A match to Isaiah 60, specifically, in fact, which we read before. Then he mentions the chief men, or priests, largely, from the ends of the earth. The ends of the earth in Scripture is typically one place, not in four directions, but just in the Orient. Why? Because it's where the Garden of Eden and the land of creation are. Because it is the end of the river from Eden system, which we will cover as well in brief. Jeremiah talks about Tyrus yet again. Tyre, Solomon's navy trading with the isles, which are beyond the sea. What sea? At the time, the Arabian Sea, or modern name, Indian Ocean. Some have attempted to say this means the end of the Red Sea, but problem, there are no isles there, and there would have to be to interpret this so. He then mentions the isles afar off. And finally, and really the biggest, even Messiah, when speaking of the Queen of Sheba's land, which we have not gotten to in this series yet, but we will, as we have already Fully proven, this land of Sheba is the Philippines. In part 2 and 2a of Solomon's Gold series, if you want to skip ahead and you can't wait for that, go ahead and watch it. No big deal. Those are actually shorter videos. They're not too bad. She came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear Solomon's wisdom. Did Yahusha know where the ends of the earth were, though? Yes, he did. Well, yeah, since John 1 is clear he was there in the beginning at creation even, so of course. However, even historically, here's a map from Aristosthenes from almost 200 years before Messiah was even born. And look, they knew of Sumatra. By the way, anyone questioning that Taprobain is Sumatra which is not only obvious by the shape of that island, certainly isn't Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka isn't a long, skinny, narrow thing like that. Pigafetta says so in his journal. And he would know. He was a sailing historian of that day who actually sailed to that area of the world. He well knew. So you turn the corner past India, whoops, sorry, India, and Sumatra, and head north, and you are in the Philippines, in fact. The uttermost parts of the earth, the isles in the east, even made this map 
from 176 BC. Now let's take all these markers though and map them and see exactly where they lead. First, this is isles, plural, not isle. So Sri Lanka and Taiwan, already out. What significant isles are there in the Red Sea? Well, none. How about in Saudi Arabia? No isles, mostly just rocks. That's what they call them, not us. Sri Lanka is an isle. When you are headed east of Israel from the Red Sea, you don't have significant isles until you get to the famous East Indies, which are well recorded in history, and everyone knew this. This is not new knowledge, but the restoration of things we once knew and somehow have forgotten in amnesia. This passage to the east has to be east of the Red Sea, oops, Ethiopia, sorry, and east of Ophir's territory of departure, Misha or Mashhad, Iran. Oops, sorry about that, Saudi Arabia and Yemen, you're out. It must be in Shem's territory, not Ham's, sorry Africa, but also that eliminates Indonesia and all things south of the line that we drew there, which we'll prove out in another video. As well as anything east for the Philippines, oh, we'll show you this mapping of Noah's division of territories very soon. They are the Isles of Silver and Gold, Tarshish and Ophir. This is obvious, guys. Absolutely obvious. How can any scholar miss this? They are a multitude or many islands. Yeah, over 7,000, in fact. A far-off country. Oops, not Ethiopia or Yemen. Hmm. In the uttermost parts of the earth. In the same region with Tarshish, in fact, meaning the Isle of the East, or Isles of the East, are Tarshish and Ophir and Sheba. It's equating it. The country must be identified with the bird of prey, the greatest, such as hmm, the largest and strongest bird of prey, the Philippine eagle. But remember, it must match all the markers so you don't start heading west to the U.S. because it's noted to have an eagle, even though it's not stronger or larger, or even Britain for that matter, or the Roman Empire, they would have to fit all of these markers, not just one, even though actually they don't fit that either. See, these work together. Finally, this is a three-year round-trip journey, not Ethiopia, nor Yemen, which are about three weeks, not three years, nor even India, which is about one year. Now, we'll show you the map and we'll test that. We'll show you the math as well. Beyond the Arabian Sea or Indian Ocean, oops, X for India and another X for Ethiopia and Yemen. Sorry guys, just doesn't work. It has to fit. None of these poorly researched claims remotely hold up to any of these angles in which we have tested this. They fail. Here we go, yet again. The Philippines is the only land of gold, Ophir, that fits all of the passages. A couple of more quick supports. Remember Jeremiah also equates the biblical land of Tarshish, known for silver, with Upaz, which is Ophir, the land of gold. And the Greeks mapped these lands for us in the Philippines. Christ, the land of gold, Ophir. Argyr, the land of silver, which is Tarshish, biblically speaking. Even the gold used for the temple walls, Parvaim, which is Ophir, defines Ophir, is in the Orient, the Far East. In the same land as the Garden of Eden, in fact. This is a specific derivative of the word Safar, where Joktan's sons, Ophir, Sheba, Havilah, headed with their cousin Tarshish on his ships to locate the ancient land of gold, Havilah, the land of Adam and Eve, 
which was renamed after them, after the flood. As we keep saying, there is no debating. The Philippines is the land of gold in all of history. It is time this knowledge be restored. For those about to comment in ignorance, yep, we always get them. We dare you to watch Solomon's Gold series by the God Culture, the original channel, to prove the Philippines is in fact Ophir, Sheba, Tarshish, and the Garden of Eden. Yes, we prove that too, and we will get there in this series very soon. Even here, we are breaking these into sound bites and clear points, but watch how all 100 clues tie together in history, the Bible, science, geography, language, etc. And this series will blow you away. Thank you for watching 100 Clues. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the bell and like us on our new Facebook, The God Culture Space Hyphen Space Original. How about that? If you wish to skip ahead, go to the God Culture YouTube channel and watch our Solomon's Gold series in English or Tagalog. There will be a link on the next screen. We can know this truth and be confident this belongs to the Philippines, and no one can disprove it. Until next time.